delightful it were on Ben Adair to rest before going over the white white sea. The dash of the wave as it launches its crash on the wind beaten shore is delight to me. Delightful it were on Ben Adair to rest when one has come over the white sea foam, his coracle cleaving her way to the west through the sport of the wave as she beats for home. How swiftly we travel, there is a grey eye, looks back upon Aaron, but it no more shall see, while the stars shall endure in the sky. Her women, her men, are her stainless shore. Melodious her clerics, melodious her birds, her children are gentle, her seniors wise. Her men are lustrous, truthful in words, her women have virtues far love to prize. From the plank of the oak, where in sorrow I lie, I am straining my sight through the water and wind, and large is the tear from my soft grey eye, looking back on the land that it leaves behind. Columkale is reputed to have founded over 300 churches across Ireland and Britain and 90 of these ruins remain today. Some of the churches he established include Kells, Glen Columkale and where I am here today in Swords. My name is Pamela Finn and you are welcome to this series about the life and legacy of Columkale and his connection to the Swords area. Columkill was born in Donegal to, into an aristocratic family called the Kenyal Connell, who give their name in the form Chir Connell to Donegal. And they were a very aristocratic and indeed royal family, I think you can... And they achieved, the, the family themselves achieved some of the highest kingships in Ireland, for instance, the t kingship of Tara. Uh, Columkill was born into that family uh, probably in the year 520, there's a little bit of doubt about the exact year, but r around about 520. And uh, his father came from, from this family, the Kenyal Cunnell of East Donegal. And people don't associate Donegal with good land, but East Donegal is very good land, very rich land. And that rich land was the basis of this family's wealth. And there are many stories about his mother, where his mother comes from. She's supposed to come from Wexford, she's from parts of Leinster, she's from Fermanagh, all sorts of... But in fact, the most reliable story is that she comes from a place called the Fanad Peninsula in the north of Donegal, the kind of neighbours, if you like, to the kingdom that were neighbours to Kenyal Cun and his father's people. So nowadays, that area, there's, uh, there's the little village of Kilmacrenan, and then beside that, there's an area called Garten, beautiful, beautiful area with three big lakes in it. And um, it's just on the edge of the Glenvey National Park, one of the big national parks of Ireland. Gorgeous place altogether. And all through that area, there are lots and lots of sites associated with the birth 
and the early life of Colum Killa. So where, where does mother first experience the pains of labor, where he's born, where he's baptized, where he played as a child, even his very first footsteps as a baby, his first walking steps are recorded in a, in a, in a rock there. So the, the area is covered with these sites, which if you like, tell a little bit about the story of Colum Kill as a baby and as a young child. And in, in medieval times, that formed a kind of a pilgrimage er, 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 route around which people would follow. Children were, were very often educated by being sent as foster children to another family. And that was regular, that was the normal way. And then they would stay with that family, maybe up to their, it depended up to their 15, 16, 17 years, that sort of thing. Now, in the case of children that were sort of, if you like, dedicated or, uh, for the church, and Colum Kill seems to be from a young age, he would often be, they would often be sent to a priest. And in this case, we were told in the legends, I have to say there are legends, as I think from factual history, Colum Kill was sent to a priest called Cretna Khan, and Cretna Khan educated him. And uh, there's a kind of fabulous stories, you know. One, one, the, one of the ways Colum Kill was taught his letters, for instance, was that the priest Cretna Khan baked the letters, in the sh you know, baked bread in the shape of the letters, and then Colum Kill eat the bread that was in the shape of the letters. And that's how he learned to read and write. That's the story, anyway. Sixth century around Godmother Kill is born is very interesting in all sorts of ways. For, on the first thing, it's in a transition from a prehistoric society, when we have no records, no history, to a historic society. And Colum Kill himself, as an adult, plays a very big role in that. When he goes to Ione, he begins recording Irish history. In the very beginnings of Irish history, Colum Kill is probably there at the be very beginnings of it, actually writing it down, you know. So we're at, uh, in a transition period from the, if you like, the pe also the other transition that's going on is that it's transition from the pagan period to the Christian. Christianity has only been introduced at most maybe 50, 60 years prior to Colum Kill's birth. So it's a very new religion, it's a new idea. But, and whether Columns Kill's own people were Christian or not, we don't know. But they certainly facilitated the practice of Christianity. And his mother, Ethna, and we have to be a bit careful about that because Ethna was also the name of a, a pagan goddess. But according to the legends, that was the name of his mother, Ethna. And she, she herself was later honored as a saint because she was the mother of a saint. So Ireland at the time was divided up into many, many small kingdoms, whether we give the name Tuatha to, and the Kenyal Connell Columkill's people was one of these. But they aggregated together, several of these aggregated together in kind of provincial kingdoms, and then some of those provincial kingdoms would be trying to become King of Tara. Tara in County Mead, the great site there, that was the most important kingship in the whole of Ireland. So kingships from various parts of Ireland would be vying with each other in competition to try to become kings of Tara. And Kenyal Connell, Colum Kill's people, were very successful and captured the kingship of Tara on several occasions. And that was an indication of how important they were. Delightful it were on Ben Adair to rest, before going over the white, white sea, the dash of the wave as it launches its crash on the wind-beaten shore is delight to me. Delightful it were on Ben Adair to rest, when one has come over the white sea foam, his coracle cleaving her way to the west through the sport of the wave as she beats for home. How swiftly we travel, there is a grey eye, looks back upon 
heron, but it no more shall see, while the stars shall endure in the sky. Her women, her men, are her stainless shore. Melodious her clerics, melodious her birds, her children are gentle, her seniors wise, her men are lustrous, truthful in words, her women have virtues far love to prize. From the plank of the oak where in sorrow I lie, I am straining my sight through the water and wind, and large is the tear from my soft grey eye looking back on the land that is.